Hi everyone, Slim here from biggerplate.com. Today I'm going to talk to you briefly about brainstorming using mind maps. Now, mind mapping and brainstorming are often almost referred to as being one and the same thing, but they're actually different. Brainstorming is usually about trying to uh, come up with creative ideas for a new project or maybe trying to think of solutions to a problem or trying to really just prompt your brain to think a little bit differently, either individually or as a group. Mind mapping is about really capturing and organizing ideas and information. So it's a different process to brainstorming, but the reason why it works so well in supporting a brainstorm is because it will help you to make sense of all these new creative ideas that you come up with. Mind mapping is a really fantastic way of putting structure into unstructured ideas and information. And particularly when you start using mind mapping software tools, you can really pull together a lot of information out of a brainstorm and put it into something coherent. So I'm going to just show you a couple of examples and give you a few tips for brainstorming using mind maps. And I'm going to use MindMeister, which is a fantastic collaborative online mind mapping tool, just to illustrate how we can do that. So let's take a look. So here we are looking at a MindMeister map. And first of all, let's just think about some of the tips and things that we like to keep in mind when we're planning brainstorming processes, either for ourselves or for our clients. So we use this concept of diverge, explore, converge. It's been around for many, many years, really great concept. We didn't create it sadly, but it's a really good thing to keep in mind when you're planning a brainstorming process. Ideally, what we wanna do is create a process that enables us to go uh, broad and big with our thinking. That's the diverge phase. And that's really about getting lots of ideas out. Once we've got lots of ideas out, we want to kind of bounce them against each other. We want to see which ones belong together or maybe build on each other and also which ones maybe just fade away because they're maybe not quite right for some reason. So we want to go through a good phase of exploration of those ideas. And then importantly, we want to converge. We want to maybe define some priorities or some actions from our brainstorm. So really it's about diverging to get lots of ideas exploring to compare and understand them better and then converging is really about prioritization. Now if you've ever been in a brainstorming process or even just a meeting really that felt a bit unsatisfactory it's probably because you were missing one or more of these stages. Often what people associate with brainstorming is really that first stage, so the divergent thinking and maybe you've got post-its all over the walls, lots of flip charts and then really what falls down a bit is what comes next and that's where uh, a good brainstorming session that doesn't follow diverge, explore, converge is not really going to do that for you. But it's also where mind mapping software like MindMeister can really help to pull together particularly in that explore and converge phase and really help you to understand and work with those ideas. So we'll have a look at that in just a moment. Another little tip if you're working in groups and brainstorming is to always try and structure the process to work individually, then in pairs, and then as a group. It's tempting sometimes to jump straight into group discussions, but actually what happens then is the first thing that's said tends to steer everybody else's thinking. So it's a really good idea to get people just thinking individually and quietly by themselves, first of all. And then if you've got a bigger group, it's a good idea to get them to discuss in pairs before you then start sharing and discussing as a group. It also means that the ideas that they come up with have been through a couple of little processes of just refining before you start sharing with a group. And it's a really good way of making your life a bit easier if you're facilitating a group brainstorm because you won't have quite so many ideas coming at you at once. You'll have maybe the ideas that they have discussed and think merit surfacing and sharing with the whole group. So individuals, pairs and group is a great way of managing a group brainstorm. And then finally, it's a good idea, although it might seem slightly counterintuitive, it's a good idea to create some constraints for your brainstorm. Now that can be constraints of time by saying to a group, we're going to give you just five minutes to brainstorm this topic or this question. Or it could be constraints like just advising people to just use one or two or three words. We want to get away from big long sentences and explanations. So you could also even create a constraint around how many things someone can contribute maybe to that top level group view. Say, no matter how many ideas you've caught out yourself, I would like just your top three. So it's a good idea to kind of create constraints because again, that's going to help you start to narrow the focus once you get into that explore and uh, converge phase of your brainstorm. So those are a couple of tips around how to run a brainstorming session in general, but how is mind mapping specifically and mind mapping software perhaps going to help us with our brainstorm? Well, let's take a look at that next. 
Okay, so when we're ready to start our brainstorming process, how is mind mapping and mind mapping software like MindMeister going to help us? Well, really it's about capturing ideas in one place in a way that helps you to build on those and see how they're connected. If ever you've done brainstorming notes with post-it notes or flip charts, you'll know that one of the problems is what comes next. And maybe someone has to take photos of everything and try and write it all up. Well, if you use mind mapping software like MindMeister to guide your brainstorm and capture what's in there, you'll find it's very simple to just build on the map. Uh, with any ideas as they come and also develop those ideas as they come as well. So you can start off with uh, maybe a map that's got some headings already built into it, maybe some general prompts like uh, this my map just asks us to think about the who, the what, the when, the why, the how and of a particular big idea. So uh, let's say we're planning a, an event, we might be talking about the who is, who are we going to invite, uh, who maybe we're going to have speakers. And that's where, again, as a group, you just want to use each little branch of your mind map as a jumping off point for something else. So you're almost doing mini brainstorms every time. So who do we want for our event to invite? Okay, and then your team might start to think of maybe uh, partners, families, uh, VIPs, whatever it might be. So the map can act as a really great kind of guide and a jumping off point just using some really simple general headings like who, what, when and why. So if we're planning our party or our event using these headings alone, we get a long way with our brainstorming and you can take on one branch at a time or you can use MindMeister to have people uh, collaborating in the different topics at the same time, even if you're working remotely. So that's maybe starting a brainstorm using just some general headings, but you could also get a little bit more creative with your prompts. Maybe if you've got a, a problem to solve or a, maybe a product idea that you're working on, you could use some of these kind of slightly unusual questions to help you frame your thinking a little bit differently. Again, individually or working as a, tour, as a team. So maybe if you've got to design a new car model for your car company, you might just start to think a little bit differently and say, well, what if we made it smaller? What would the impact of that be? Maybe it would be cheaper. So we can just start to capture ideas. What if we change it? What if we uh, maybe stop making star stop cars and maybe start bikes? So it's just a way of prompting your thinking. And again, how you design the brainstorm should be to diverge and explore and converge. So you could ask groups or even think yourself one topic at a time. You may not reveal the whole mind map, but the MindMeister map is going to help you to capture and build on ideas from different people. So what if we did start bikes? Okay, well, we have expertise in these areas or lack of. And it doesn't really matter where the conversation or the discussion goes, your MindMeister map is going to be able to just follow the threads and follow the discussion as the ideas build out. But you can always just bring yourself back to the beginning and think, what was the original questions we were trying to answer? So that gets you away from relying on flip charts, post-it notes, mess everywhere, because the mess can be contained and structured and organized in mind mapping software, particularly like MindMeister, very, very easily. So that's if you start your brainstorm with a couple of kind of creative prompts, slightly uh, unusual questions to just maybe help you think differently. But the process is the same. Diverge, get your ideas out, then start to compare notes and discuss those in the map. And then ideally we want to converge maybe on, uh, maybe we think this is the big idea. So we could use some of the functionality in, in the MindMeister tool, for example, to say uh, we really like this idea, we're going to start bikes. That's the big idea. So we start to then converge and show in our mind map our priority area. Areas. But of course, you don't have to start your brainstorm with these uh, questions already there. You could start with something, maybe it's just working on your own. Maybe you've got just an idea for uh, an event you want to run by yourself. So again, we can come into the mind map and just really start by thinking about any topics we like and just start building them out in the mind map. Uh, we might think about venues, we might think about food, we might think about drinks, whatever it might be for our, our event, our idea. And again, the mind map format just enables us to go, actually, I can think of something right away. Entertainment, I'm going to break down into maybe music. Uh, and what else might we have? We might have games. So the map is just going to prompt my thinking. What kind of games? Maybe we're going to have kids games and maybe adult games. What might that be? Okay, maybe we're going to have darts, uh, snooker, pool, I don't know. For adults, kids, maybe there's going to be a, a bouncy house 
and maybe some uh, Jenga or these kind of things. So whatever it might be, the mind map can kind of follow our thinking and collect our thoughts as we go through. And we can go really broad with our ideas, but again, using the mind mapping software tools, we can also go down to that level of actually, once we've done our full brainstorm, we can go right down into the kind of the convergence and the planning details of how to go and book that bouncy house, the Jenga, whatever it might be for our kids' games. So it's a really simple way of building out a brainstorm, either starting with scratch or starting with some creative prompts or some very general prompts. A mind mapping software tool like MindMeister is going to help you to go big and broad and get all of your ideas out into one map, organize them, see what belongs together, categorize them, and then even if you wanted to go further and start the actual planning, you can do it all within the same structured format, which is going to really help you keep track of where that initial brainstorm may take you. So that's it for now. For MindMeister templates, tutorials and training, don't forget to visit biggerplate.com and don't forget to subscribe to our channel here.